Okay, welcome back to a new uh, video, in this case a physics video, in which I would like to do some calculations uh, regarding horizontal shots. Yeah? These are typical exercises uh, that can be asked throughout the studies or it can be part of an examination where these kind of things have to be calculated even in school. So I think it's also very important to, to actually know what to do if such a question appears. So. Um, I try to make it as simple as possible. Uh, actually, um, we we can imagine now having a ball uh, which is thrown horizontally with an initial speed of 25 meter per second from a height of 1.5 meter, a uh, typical height of a human being. Um, so uh, the, the first question is uh, also the most simple one. When does the ball hit the ground? We want to calculate the time actually, the time of flight. Then we want to calculate the maximum distance. Uh, then we also want to know the speed under which the ball actually hits the ground, the final speed. And we also want to calculate the angle under which the ball hits the ground, the angle of incidence. Yeah? So we will start with part one, with part A, which is um, yeah, for which we will make as usual first sketch. So we can maybe uh, say that here is our human being that actually throws this ball here. So the trajectory I think will look somehow like that. Um, as you might know, this is a parabolic shape actually. And we can also define our coordinate system. So um, we say that uh, we have our y direction in, in uh, vertical upward direction and our x axis we have in horizontal direction. Yeah? And we also uh, define the place where the ball is actually thrown uh, as x equal to zero. This will make the calculation a little bit easier. And yeah, of course, we have also, uh, we can also define a few initial parameters. So for example, we have an horizontal shot, which means we don't have any initial speed in y direction, only the gravitational pull. Yeah? So we have a vector with the value of g pointing downwards in negative y direction. And we have uh, our um, initial speed v0 in x direction. Yeah? And then, of course, what we can also in addition define is maybe the height. Yeah? So the height from which the ball is thrown, this we call maybe just in this case h. OK, and this is in principle everything what we need. Now we can directly start uh, with quantifying certain things. So I, I would always recommend to start with some equations. Yeah? We know already uh, the general distance time law. Uh, and this is also the one which we need because what we have here is pure kinematics. So we can note this down here, d of zero equal one half a t square plus v zero t plus yeah, any initial constant d zero. OK, um, and now we can uh, we can think of what kind of uh, values are actually have to be taken into account. So what we need because of the superposition principle, we need two independent equations, one in x direction and one in y direction. Yeah? So for the one in x direction, we will start here with x of t. And then what we need from here, the, the first part we don't need because it's actually an acceleration involved. We don't have any acceleration in x direction. So this can be ignored. Uh, we have an initial speed in x direction, v0 t. So this is what we need actually. And we also define x equal to zero where the ball is released. So this part is also vanishing. So the only thing which we have to insert for x of t is v0 times t. Okay, and now for y, we have to do a similar thing. So y of t uh, is equal to, uh, now we have to take this part into account because we have an acceleration of g yeah, in negative y direction. And we also have to insert a minus here. We don't have an initial speed in y direction, so this part we can ignore, but we have an initial height, yeah, h. So what we can write here now is minus one half g t square plus h. Yeah? So these are actually the two equations that we have to take into account when it comes to an horizontal shot. 
And now uh, in the first step, we want to actually calculate the time, the time of flight. Yeah, this was the first part of our exercise. So this we will do, of course, by uh, having the condition y of t equal to zero, because we say that uh, that y equal to zero is our ground level, actually. Yeah? So when we want to calculate the time of flight, then we have to set y of t equal to zero. And when we insert then uh, our equation, actually, uh, then we can, uh, I mean, this equation here, yeah, then we have minus one half g t square plus h equal to zero. Um, so the only thing which we have to do, of course, is solving this for t. And this we can do very simple. So we make a new page here uh, and we write here solving for t. And yeah, when we do this, uh, we have to bring this part on this side here and then multiply with two, divide by g. And at the end, we also have to calculate the square root, of course. So this is very simple. And we get here uh, t, let's call that uh, maybe t bar. So this is our, our time of flight uh, equals uh, two times h divided by g. And when you insert all the values here, uh, 1.5 meter divided by, let's suppose, 10 meter per second squared. And from that, the square root, this results in a value of um, 0 0.548 seconds. Yeah. So this is now our, our falling time of the ball, which is also the time of flight. Yeah? Because we can, as I said, treat x and y independently. So now this, this part is actually done. And now we want to calculate the maximum distance that the ball travels. Yeah? So now what we have to do, of course, we have to uh, insert this value t bar into uh, x of t. Yeah? And this then gives uh, x of t bar. And the formula we can just take from here, v0 times t bar v0 times t bar and uh, this is uh, of course 25 meter per second times our value 0 0.548 second and this is when you calculate this gives you a distance of 13.69 meter now yeah, which is quite far but this is just as i said pure kinematics. So here I did some, some wrong labeling actually. So this is part C here. What is the speed of the ball when it hits the ground? And uh, yeah, this first we have to of course define our speed. Yeah, we have to actually uh, draw the ball here and then we have two speeds. One is in x direction, one is in y direction. Yeah, because now when it hits the ground uh, we have two components actually. And the final speed or the total speed is the vector sum of these two. Yeah? And uh, of course, we have here um, uh, a 90 degree angle. So we can use the theorem of Pythagoras to calculate this. Yeah? So what we can do, um, maybe we can highlight this a little bit here. Uh, so this is actually our value v and uh, this is given as v equal and then we can um, we have here our v in, in x direction vx uh, vx plus uh, and then um, maybe we can choose another color yellow uh, we have here our vy and of course both have to be squared yeah, so this has to be squared and uh, this has to be squared. And at the end, we also have to, of course, calculate the square root of that. Yeah. And now what we can do, uh, we, we can insert our values. So we know already that uh, Vx must be V0. This does not change at all yeah, because there is no acceleration happening. And uh, on the other hand, we also... Um, we also know um, our vy of vy squared actually, and this is um, g 
times t, actually minus g times t, but uh, we can now write it like this because this is actually the speed when it hits the ground, just um, the g factor times t bar the falling speed. Yeah? So when we then uh, actually square all of that and calculate the square root of this, then this gives you 25 meter per second plus um, now we can insert our values here 10 meter per second squared times um, 0 0.548 seconds and this also has to be squared of course these two values and at the end we have to calculate the square root again and when you insert all the values uh, at the end this gives you 25.6 meter per second for the final speed yeah so this was also actually not so difficult but you have to get an idea how the final speed is defined and uh, then at the end uh, you have to use Pythagoras in order to actually calculate something and now coming to the to the last part the angle of incidence um, and there we have to also uh, use the same definition actually of our speed so what we can do, we can again uh, draw our, our ball here and we have our two speeds Vx and Vy and now we have to define our angle of incidence of course first and I would say that the good definition would be this one, the angle between the speed vector and the horizontal plane, the ground level actually. Yeah, and uh, then we can just use simple trigonometry in order to calculate this. So, of course, the tangents of alpha we can calculate here is just given as uh, v of y divided by v of x. And uh, now again, we can insert our gt bar for the speed in y direction divided by vx um, which is just v0. Yeah, we can now uh, of course um, insert the, the formula here and then uh, and calculate this uh, later but of course we know the values already which we can insert so we will do that now. We have here our minus 10 meter per second squared times uh, 0 0.548 seconds divided by 25 meter per second and if you insert all the values here uh, then at the end you get uh, 0 0.219 uh, 0 0.219 and then of course the only thing which we have to do we have to solve this for alpha uh, which is not so much difficult because the only thing which we have to do we have to calculate the arcus tangents uh, which means uh, arcus tangents of 0 0.219 and this gives at the end when you calculate this a value of minus 12.35 degree and now uh, yeah with this uh, we have actually calculated all the important parameters of a horizontal shot I would not know what else to calculate and I think a similar question then you could answer easily okay and with this I want to then uh, stop the video if you yeah, I hope you learned something new. If you like the video, please hit the like button. Um, if you want to see more videos, please subscribe my channel if you have not done so far. And hopefully see you soon for a new video.